Hey guys, I'm Dustin. Uh, again, this is uh, Video Game Sauce. I'm doing another interview here with Dane from Dane's Games. I don't know why I said it like that, but anyway, how you doing, Dane? Good, thank you. That's good. You're eat your yeah. Tim Tams and you're you're all you're straightened out, right? Yes, and I have drink of milk. You have leche, the walking mm. cow water. I like milk. <laughs> I all drink right. milk a lot. Do you? Do you ever get sick? Yeah. Do you ever get sick to your stomach, Dane? Only when I see another penis. Well, that's yeah, that's not very favorable. Uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I don't know where I was going with that exactly. I don't know yeah, where don't exactly know. you kind of see one in the wild just hanging out there. I don't know. Yeah, I've always, <laughs> I've always wanted to um, live on a military range and kind of run around naked, and I've kind of wanted to uh, suture my scrotum to the tip of my penis, so when I come in contact with soldiers, then I get an erection my crutch flares up like a frill neck lizard <laughs> and then i just run off you know what occurs to me when you said that that you might have thought about that before because that <laughs> jesus <laughs> that was that was improv at its best oh that was great <laughs> that really threw me off but no i guess uh, i got dan in line here on via skype because we we're going to talk about memories of the sega genesis of course in your neck of the woods, it's the Mega Drive. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Basically, it was called the Mega Drive, you know, pretty much everywhere except North America, where it was called the Genesis. Yeah, because Americans in the Bible, I guess. I don't know. But was it something to do with, like, copyright issues or something like that? Yeah, I would assume so. I've never really bothered to look in it into mm -hmm. it because I haven't been that fascinated by it, but I've just learned to accept it. Mm. Mm. See, anytime like I a, have a... In, like an inoperable brain tumor, I've learned to accept it. <laughs> Do you have a brain tumor, Dane? Is this something you want to talk about? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> Previous interview, Dane was like sort of my source for Sega information, and I think I stopped because I realized that it might have been driving you crazy, but uh, I don't know, did you, did you grow up as a lad with the Sega Mega Drive and all that stuff well i did it wasn't my first console but i did have one yes okay what was the first console um <laughs> uh, -oh. uh you just said that really seductively what was your first console uh, yeah. i um uh. i had um, <laughs> the first uh console experience i had was the atari 2600 at my next door neighbor's house and then uh commodore 64 at another friend's house but the first console I owned was a Nintendo Entertainment System. Okay. And then the second console was the Sega Mega Drive. I see. Yeah, I, yeah. you know, at first I didn't want to give people the impression that you hate other consoles. You just very are Sega-oriented. Oriented. Yeah, I'm just, yeah. I, I don't even like to call myself a fanboy because I'm not just diehard Sega. I mean, I love all consoles really except modern stuff but um mm -hmm. yeah just that that's my favorite it's where my main passion lies in regards to retro gaming and collecting and it's just what i happen to focus on i enjoy doing that well it's it's very much a classic it's very nostalgic and sega and all that stuff is just it really brings me back i don't know that's why which is basically the purpose of this whole interview is talking about memories and things like that you have like because i know the first time i ever seen a sega game and i was just blown away do you remember the first time you ever saw a Mega Drive game? You're just like, holy crap. Yeah, um, the first time I ever saw uh, at least Sega 16-bit anyway was in magazines, um, video game magazines at my local news agency store. You know, it was the 8-bit era. The 16-bit era was about to hit everyone's living rooms and, you know, they were raving about it in magazines and showing screenshots and that was my... Uh, this was before the internet was in everyone's mm -hmm. home or i don't even recall the internet being in anyone's home around me anyway and uh yeah the magazines were the first time i saw it and uh yeah it got me very excited indeed yeah i remember the first time the very first time i ever saw Sega, i was at a mall with my parents and sonic one was playing and i just stopped and i was just my mouth was agape i just couldn't believe it was like the most amazing thing like the i was like and i remember saying out loud wow these graphics are amazing it'll never get better than that <laughs> <laughs> that's what they all say isn't it every time pretty much actually i just saw some today where the next gen console supposedly is supposed to render in f with four million polygons uh, i can't even contemplate that well and the picture looked like a real person and it's just i don't know where do you go from that it's just pretty much just going to be virtual reality i don't know one of these days it'll be cerebral brain implants with a bunch of you know ocular audio yeah. 
but well, anyway. you know they they tried pushing virtual reality in the 90s and, and it didn't work and in the 80s they thought they'd be flying cars in the 2000s and it hasn't happened so who knows it's true yeah because well i think everybody thought that because back to the future too we all wanted, yeah we all wanted hoverboards that didn't happen and deloreans yeah De- well delore yeah yeah <laughs> i still would like a delorean i don't care i know it's a piece of oh. junk <laughs> hell yeah they look awesome yeah but anyway yeah. What, what's the first sega game you ever played do you remember um yeah the um oh, this is really weird i vividly remember the exact moment that i got the sega mega drive and i was in my room sitting on the floor playing with you know toys or something i can't even remember exactly what i was doing but i looked up at mum and dad yeah mum was holding a sega mega drive in her hands and oh man i was just so excited but because i collect box consoles now i wish for the life of me i could remember what box it came in uh, because i had three games with it initially and i can't remember if they came with it or they purchased them separately because it was a Japanese system and Japanese games. The games were Altered Beast, uh, Granada, and Strider, I Ooh. think, from memory. Strider, yeah, which were those some are pretty awesome games. Those are pretty awesome games. Actually, I remember playing Strider back in the day, just being blown away. Even though it's just nowadays, it's you know pretty uh, pretty tame. But that's an that's a pretty cool game. Oh, it still impresses me, but uh, I've never moved beyond really fifth generation consoles so you know i still get impressed at the graphics on them but yeah that was a masterpiece indeed i mean especially yeah. with the you know the composers and stuff had to make music you know very limited music you know and make them actually sound very good and i think that's very hard to do yeah and with strider they just they did create a masterpiece it sounds more like a um oh some crazy science fiction soundtrack as opposed to a 16-bit gaming you know piece it's yeah it was incredible yeah and for me i remember playing strider and i i can uh, i know how the music goes in my head but for me it always sounded like russians in space type music it was really weird sounding but it's really cool <laughs> yeah it was very bizarre they definitely created an atmosphere of vibe just really helped to immerse you into the game you know music does amazing things on its own but when it's coupled you know with an amazing game like that and the you know, music piece is amazing in itself. Yeah, it just works wonders. True, yeah. So what do you think you like the Mega Drive so damn much, Dane? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, it's probably a lot of reasons. Like I said, I in the 8-bit era, I had a Nintendo Entertainment System. Even though the Master System was superior in many ways, uh, the Nintendo was marketed uh, more heavily, and that's maybe why my parents purchased one. But when it came time to the 16-bit era, it seems like Sega kind of pumped up the advertising campaign and uh, really pushed it and it worked. You know, a part of that was just the system itself working great, obviously. Yeah, I don't know. I think Mega Drive, you know, slash Genesis seemed to be a real console with attitude. You know, they really marketed uh, towards kids with their hats on backwards and skateboarding <laughs> and, yeah. you know, like punch, punching through stuff in the commercials. It was all about attitude and this is awesome. And um, I think it was about the same time as well that I really started to have sleepovers with friends from school, sleeping over my house on the weekends and school break. You know, we'd stay up all night playing Mega Drive. I think I was at that age where I started to kind of be more aware of how impressive something was or appreciated it better as well you know so a lot of my favorite memories are from being young are playing you know mega drive all night long with friends from school and uh yeah i think that coupled with the advertising campaign and as well nintendo and i'm not saying anything bad about nintendo because i love nintendo i love the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo for me has always been more family orientated, cartoony, bubbly and I mean that really shows with the Wii but I found the Mega Drive although lacking in some areas from the Super Nintendo had a kind of a, wa- a wider range of darker themed games. There was less kind of graphics filled with more solid colours. There was more spreads of pixels which gave a, uh, a field of depth which you know sounds silly now but made the games look more realistic and, and yeah it just seemed like a darker cooler more hardcore console to me that's true because a, yeah now that you said that i i totally realized that splatterhouse came out on the master system you i don't think you'd ever see splatterhouse on nintendo ever on the mega drive you silly sausage yeah what did i say and the master, master system was it on, <laughs> oh no actually i thought it was on the master system wasn't it on both i don't think so but i could be mm, wrong okay yeah, because yeah. I, I want to say that I believe Splatterhouse was on the Master System and 2 and 3 were on the Mega Drive Genesis. Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, I wasn't I, aware of that, if that's the case. But that yeah. might be the case, but I might be wrong. You're more of an authority on this shit than I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> maybe, yeah. maybe it, someone put it on there as a pirate or a tech toy mm. release or something, but yeah, I'm, not, I'm really not sure. Okay. Yeah, you mm. know, it's, it's, it's a good point, though, because um, I owned, at one point, I owned a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis, and I remember playing Mortal Kombat 2 and 3, and, you know, of course, on the Genesis, you had blood, and on the wimpy Nintendo, <laughs> there was no blood, you know, it was green or whatever yeah. it was. <laughs> <laughs> things like that and i always thought the genesis yeah. was very cool in that respect like you know and it wasn't until years later that they figured out that you know nintendo had you know their seal of approval which meant that you couldn't put in religious things you couldn't have blood and blah blah people dying in certain ways and things like that and sega just was like nah just yeah. whatever yeah they definitely <laughs> kept it more family orientated and yeah for people listening to this they'll you know probably say oh you know there was darker themed you know horror games and cool realistic games on the super nintendo and i'm not disputing that at all but yeah i just think for me anyway my opinion was that the mega drive had more variety of those kind of games cool. as opposed to a bubbly cartoony kind of family orientated games you know which is great in its own right but yeah the, the mega drive for those reasons just appealed to me much more well yeah and i mean a big case in point is for as like nintendo versus sega is like uh castlevania super castlevania in japan mm-hmm. had crosses and blood and things like that or blood i'm not sure about the blood but anyway yeah and they ported it over to america's and they took out a lot of the that stuff but i believe and then come over to the genesis it probably would have been a whole different story yeah i've only ever played uh the genesis version so i can't really compare the two yeah and i want to say i want to say that the genesis this was a castlevania bloodlines is amazing and much darker than the other ones because yeah like on the regular nintendo castlevania there were supposed to be crosses and things in the background those are all gone it's supposed to be a darker game because the castlevania is a dark game yeah definitely (laughs) yeah i mean uh my only experience of it was on the uh, Nintendo 8-bit, the entertainment system, but uh, yeah, I never played it on the 16-bit Nintendo, only on Mega Drive, so uh, mm. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, because I've got, yeah. I don't know, because I'm a total dark, I've gone through, because I love Castlevania, I've gone through and just read about everything I could, and there's just different versions, and the Japanese version is far superior in my opinion. Okay. Usually they are. But anyway, back to the Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive. Yeah. Like, your ears are like hurting, you're like, Nintendo, ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I still do have my original NES and SNES with the Power Pack cards. Oh. Because I, uh, I didn't let go altogether. That's true. Oh, yeah, and the people, well, for people who aren't aware of the Power Pack, how could you describe that like a cartridge where you could play every game? Yeah, it's a modified cartridge with a flash card which enables you to put uh, basically the entire system's library worth of ROMs on the cart to play them all on the TV, on the actual hardware. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah I remember the first... Actually, the, 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 one of the second games I ever played on the Genesis was Streets of Rage. Oh, so good. Those games are amazing. Yeah. I love Streets of Rage. Street, not Streets of the 3, not so much. Yeah, Streets yeah. of Rage 3 seems to be a really popular one. Yeah, I mean, this is crazy, but I never even played the Streets of Rage uh, games as a kid, only uh, mm. when I was an adult where I able to obtain them but uh that was something that i actually completely missed out on uh whilst the nintendo was you know selling at the stores true yeah because I, I just yeah. have really fond memories of going through the um into the options and messing with the sound sound effects there's like you know people being punched and things like that and just loving the crap out of it because i thought it was so cool just you know going hurrah you know or, or whatever punching <laughs> things like oh that. yeah and then you'd get your friend to do it on the controller while you did the action in real time exactly. to try to pretend that you're yeah like, yeah because yeah, your kids yeah. and you're like oh, this is funny hey, do it again <laughs> <laughs> man at, at school we'd always pretend to do a dukins at each other and stuff from street fighter 2 <laughs> hey, you're a pretty big street fighter fan right oh yeah it's um probably my favorite game of all time it, i uh, remembered my dad taking me to a game store in sydney called computer spot which i don't think exists anymore anymore yeah i mean i can't believe he did buy it for me but he bought this game for me street, street fighter 2 the special championship edition mm. and i think it was about 110 dollars back then and i took it home and he watched me play it and it was you know just two guys fighting each other and he said is that all it is and i said yeah but i love it it's great <laughs> i mean the hype about street fighter 2 in the schoolyard and in the magazines everyone was waiting for it and i first played it at my friend uh, jordan's house on the super nintendo and i thought it was great but uh yeah when i got it on the mega drive that was just something else i just yeah, yeah that i was just a... uh yeah i probably peed my pants a little the first time <laughs> i got it home and played so, it it was just great so of the releases the street fighter releases do you have a favorite one because i know like i like the classic one 
one, but I also like the, uh, not so much the new Challengers version. I don't know, what's your cup of tea on that? Um, I mean, I did play it the first time on the arcade, the World Warriors, the original, uh, mm. you know, Street Fighter 2 one, although I did play Street Fighter on the Commodore 64, but, uh, my fur preferred version would be Street Fighter 2 Special Championship Edition, just because it's the most nostalgic to me. You know, it's, uh, a simplistic one. It has all the characters, you know, that you can play with, like the four end guys, Barlog, uh, Sagat, M. Bison, Vega. As, yeah, just probably due to nostalgia and it's simple compared to the later ones. With the new challenges, it didn't, I just don't think they really got it right. They changed a lot of the colors and palettes in the background and it just seemed really messed up. Yeah, I just thought it was a bit of an eyesore. Yeah, I always, always resort to a uh, special championship edition. Yeah, I like those. Because I remember the first time I ever played the Street Fighter 2, uh, I was at my cousin's house house and they had it on Super Nintendo and they just could not get past Vega. And they're like, here, you want to give it a shot? And they ended up beating the game and they were just a game. Like, how the hell did you beat Street Fighter 2? <laughs> yeah. Oh. I mean, I, I don't even know if I, uh, I think when I was little, I beat it on the easiest level, but you know, ah. now I've been, now I've played the absolute crap out of it. I put it on the most difficult level and I normally always finish it and mm. I put it on hyper sometimes as well to give that extra bit of a challenge so you could punch 800 times in a second <laughs> yeah <laughs> if i if i have a uh, if i use a controller with turbo well you got your capcom fighting stick right yeah yeah mm. i'll uh, probably never use it again but uh Aww. maybe maybe <laughs> It was all right. It goes back up on the shelf. Who's your character of choice? Um, I don't want to be cliche and like everyone else, but it's definitely Ryu or Ken. I mean, well, that's who everyone chose normally. So, well, and they're so easy to play as, but I'd say yeah, my favorite right. My favorite has got to be Guile. I don't know why. I just always rocked Guile, like, no pro- like just whooped that ass. Like, no problem. I don't know why. Yeah, I remember back in the 90s when they had the World Championships for Street Fighter 2. I believe the winner was from a South American country, maybe Britain. Brazil or somewhere, but I remember reading in a magazine that he said he suggests uh, Master Guile and Chung Li and then mm. Master Ken Ryu before you start to learn the other characters. So I assume by what he says that, uh, you know, going by his expert opinion that Guile, Chung Li and Ryu Ken are the best characters to utilize oh definitely and yeah because i know zangief dolls him are a bit harder to control but you know very playable yeah Not even gonna... though zangief has the uh most powerful move in the entire game which is the spinning screw pole driver oh but they make it i mean i can pull it off no problem but i remember back in the day that it was being really difficult like you had to do a 360 on your controller like i was like what like i gotta do this complicated button mashup but yeah the pile this what is it called again the pile driver uh, s- spinning screw pile driver okay. i think that sounds mm. about right i just uh chewed my toenail off with my mouth well, that's that's what well, you were saying that well that keeps you busy you know you gotta tim tams <laughs> tim tams and uh toenails toenails yeah that's right in a blender <laughs> so i don't know is there anything else you want to talk about dean or anything else that comes to mind maybe um, oh well, i said why i like the mega drive you know i mean yeah i just think it's a great system it'll always remain uh i don't think i'm ever going to progress past fifth generation gaming i mean i've never even held an xbox 360 ps3 or wii controller in my hands Ooh. of uh i don't think i ever will i think until i die it's going to be mega drive and that's it some people might think that's boring and too restricted but you got to do what you enjoy and that's what i enjoy yeah i mean that's your that's your cup of tea you know i understand like yeah some people like i have an xbox and i barely even game on it anymore i just didn't watch netflix all day <laughs> Well, not all day. Yeah. I don't want to give people the wrong impression. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely... Those consoles are definitely built for certain people. Things like that. Yeah. It's my security blanket. Aw. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Dane, thanks for coming by again. It's really nice to have thank, you. Thank you for having me. So anyway, guys, I'll put a link to where you can find Dane's channels. His, uh, he, like I said before... He makes really good videos, some high quality stuff, and you know he, he's Australian. I mean, you can't go wrong. He's, he, has, he has a beard. I mean, what else do you want? Put, put two links. Put two links. Yeah. Just one on top. Just make the whole screen like one big link. Just put one link to my YouTube channel and yeah. one link to a photograph of my beard. <laughs> All right. Well, give me a photograph. I will do that. If there's a picture of your beard online, I will do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll see what I can do. I'll Date. see. Uh, Dane. If I pull some strings. Okay, like Dane'sbeard.com or something. 
Yeah, just go to the uh, European Beard and Moustache World Championships website. I'm on there in the 27th place for the natural beard category in 2005. Nice. See, he's multi- nice. multi-talented gentleman. Gentle lover. Exactly. The ladies are not complaining. No, I do everything for the lady. <laughs> 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 Alright guys, well thanks for listening or watching the video. Have a good one, I'll see you next time.